Gallimera, Gallimera, Gallimera. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, you joined me on the balcony this morning. Sorry I'm a bit late, uh, but the reason for that is because uh, I was watching the parade this morning. Oh, hang on a minute. I'm getting pecked to death at the moment by cheeky, uh, cheeky young chicken. There you go, lovely. There you go. And the rest of them are all out hovering around at the moment. Yeah, they've left me a message as well. Uh, right, can I just say what a beautiful morning. It's been a beautiful day for a parade today, to be honest. Although Jane is not happy about the parade because she said, and, and I quite like, agree with her actually, um, the parade happened come hell or high water. Uh, the parade actually took place and the streets were empty, to be quite honest. Not many members of the public watching the parade. Um, I had to laugh. Um, the UK with uh, Prince Charles and Camilla made an absolutely sterling effort, dressed accordingly, looking very regal and very, very, uh, very, uh, what's the word? Very classy. Uh, the Russians obviously came along. They'd obviously made an effort for the occasion, smartly dressed, had to have a wreath that was bigger than uh, everybody else's. Um, as for the French, a French foreign minister, uh, who, who was a woman, she turned up and I've got to be honest, she didn't exactly look dressed for a formal occasion. Uh, she was wearing what could only best described as a, a Paddington bear coat, uh, dressed in trousers, um, didn't very, did, just, she, she looked more like she just popped out to the shops to buy some baguettes and maybe a few croissants as well. Um, and the wreath that the French put at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier was best described as a pot plant, to be quite honest. Uh, so not a good showing from the French, depending on how keen Macron was to come along, but couldn't, uh, because obviously um, France and Paris is in a mega lockdown at the moment, and they've just spent, or oh, they've just uh, earned about 16 uh, million euros out of, uh, well, more than that, a bit more than that, uh, out of Greece in aircraft sales. So um, again, I would say a pretty poor showing from the French actually at that parade. But uh, Prince Charles and Camilla looked absolutely fantastic. I had to laugh. Uh, Prince Charles just had one of them bog standard uh, NHS masks, the sort that, you know, we wear and you chuck away. Uh, every other man and his dog had the designer masks on. Uh, the Russian one with little Russian flags on, the uh, French one, our little, uh, little tricolours in it. And um, the British one was just a bog standard NHS. You thought he would have worn a Union Jack one, wouldn't you? That'd have looked absolutely brilliant at the parade with a Union Jack mask on. But anyway, the weather today, as you can see, is absolutely glorious. Um, and uh, also the other reason that I, I didn't come on air as quickly was because uh, I ended up commentating on the feed that I was on. Uh, somebody was restreaming the parade. A uh, lovely guy for, called Georgius uh, Greek TV. Can I just say a big hello to Georgius? We were having a right little laugh uh, while we were watching the uh, parade, uh, commenting on the people there. And so can I just say, I think they did actually put on a good parade as well. Uh, it's just a shame there wasn't many people from the general public who were allowed to watch it, uh, which kind of went against everything going on with lockdown and everything else. It's a kind of... Um, kind of hypocritical in some respects so you consider that they banned uh, carnival they banned um, christmas and everything else yet this parade went ahead come hell or high water anyway he's got his parade and we'll see how the day progresses anyway let's have a quick look at the news because got to be honest there's been a lot going on here in greece in the last 24 hours obviously just before the parade started a big shout out to lovely amanda gregory Nice to see you back. Um, I know yesterday you said you were very busy uh, having to do admin, so uh, we missed your weather forecast yesterday, to be quite honest. Um, so uh, who else have we got? Mark Walker's tuning in as well. Who else have we got there? Uh, uh, oh, we've got Amanda Gregory. Uh, glad the parade went well. <laughs> Maybe we can have our parade now, uh, open for the season. Yeah, I agree with you there, Amanda, 100%. Uh, Emma Marco says... Uh, 
Morning, Ginge. One rule for them, another rule for us. Totally peed off with, with it all, to be honest. Uh, give us our freedom back. Yeah, I agree with that totally. Uh, David Matthews says, good morning. Amanda is watching. Andrew the Fridge Watkins. Christopher Lloyd is watching. Ah, oh, here we go. Uh, good morning, Ginge. Not too bad for a parade today. Cloudy with sunshine. Highs of 13. Feeling a little cooler in the breeze, which I've got to be honest is true. Uh, and enjoy the day. Thank you very much. So what I'm going to do now quickly is I'm just going to turn we should be back on there here i am back again right okay let's have a look at what's been going on within the last 24 hours just a quick reminder 25th of march today uh 2021 it's a thursday i can't believe this week has just shot by and uh it is now day 139 so tomorrow friday will be 140 days all right anyway covid in the last 24 hours now Got to be honest, uh, things are improving slightly. Uh, COVID infections recorded yesterday uh, was uh, 3,062, which was down on the day before, excuse me, which was 3,586, uh, making the grand total since the pandemic started uh, 245,405, of which obviously 51% were male. Now, there are 11 new, ent uh, 11 new cases recorded on entries into the country, which is up by one from 10 on the previous day. Now, according to the national stats yesterday, uh, there were four new cases in Lefkada, four new cases in Kefalonia, 12 new cases in Corfu, and 10 cases on Zakynthos. Now, that's according to the national stats. However, Locally on the ground, I can confirm this morning that we actually had 15 new cases for Wednesday. OK, uh, there were eight that came from uh, private clinics uh, where testing is done there. Six were also confirmed by the external testing uh, mobile Greek health. And uh, one was a 58 year old man who went to the hospital and underwent a test and was confirmed to be positive with the virus. Um, just as a little matter of interest, uh, the Mobile Greek Health were out yesterday and they carried out 145 tests on the island, of which six proved a positive. So Zakynthos at the moment, uh, we are in uh, the new listing, obviously, of an area of concern, along with eight other regions. And currently at the moment, Zakynthos's case per 100,000 is quite high at 56.43 cases, all right? However, uh, looking at the total numbers at the moment, Zakynthos now, according to my calculations, has had 244 positive cases since the beginning of the year. And this month alone, uh, we've had 144 confirmed cases here on the island. So uh, it's still not looking good for us with the numbers game at the moment. Anyway, uh, also as well, uh, the deaths at the moment, they have risen slightly. Uh, the other day I reported to you, there were 51 deaths across Greece. Uh, for yesterday, there were 67 new deaths across Greece as well. Once again, our condolences to those people and families affected. Uh, again, that brings the death toll now since the pandemic started to 7,531. The average age of those people is 79 years of age and 96% of those had underlying health conditions or were over the age of 70. And once again, just to remind you that the average death rate in 2019 before COVID had ever raised its head was about 329 cases a day. Um, Zakynthos at the moment, uh, we've had three deaths uh, since the beginning of the year. Now, when it comes to critical cases, believe it or not, critical cases seem to have stabilised at the moment across Greece. Uh, I reported to you 699 critical cases across Greece in ICUs, and at the moment it is still 699 cases, of which 458 are male, uh, 241 are female. Now, the average age for those people in critical condition uh, is around about 68 years of age, and 86% of them have underlying health conditions or are over the age of 70. And at the moment, uh, no new numbers on the IC or not in the ICU, but on the COVID clinic here in Zakynthos. And at the moment, according to the hospital last reported, there were seven uh, people in the COVID clinic there. Right now, looking at the news this morning, uh, this came in literally hot off the press this morning. Uh, the UK's two largest tour operators, TUI and Jet2, 
say they are still planning to start travel on the 17th of May, despite a bill that is going to go through the Houses of Parliament today in the UK, banning travel to Britain by uh, June 30th, with a £5,000 fine for those attempting to travel abroad. Uh, both TUI and Jet2 holidays point out that this arrangement does not replace the UK government's global travel task force provo- proposal, which is expected on the 12th of April. TUI insists that holidays this summer will be possible, but acknowledge that entry requirements will differ from country to country. We believe that holidays this summer will be possible, taking into account the excellent vaccination program, the use of tests where required. The company says it is acknowledging that entry requirements from uh, will vary from country to country. Currently, all two UK vaccinations, sorry, vacations are cancelled until the 17th of May, a date announced by the British government as the starting point for uh, travel abroad. TUI is awaiting the input from the Global Travel Task Force, uh, its uh, partner body, on April the 12th, on which the international travel, uh, in which international travel can then take place. Meanwhile, Jet2 Holidays CEO uh, Steve Heapy also points out that the British government continues to have a clear ambition to reopen international travel and, like its customers, is looking forward to more details in the coming weeks to open flights. Currently, travel plans uh, are due to start with them on May the 17th. Uh, What is clear, he stressed, is a great desire from customers to go on vacation this summer and beyond. Well, that is obviously, uh, we know this just because you're tuning in now, watching this, that people are desperate to get away. And again, we will wait and see what the outcome is in the British Houses of Parliament uh, when this bill goes for its, I think it's in its second read now, uh, and see what happens. Anyway, fingers crossed that some eminence of uh, normality will come in, and this £5,000 fine for just even thinking about going abroad, uh, maybe that's going to get quashed, all right, but we shall wait and see. Now, what is interesting, as you know, I've been asking about what are the Dutch doing? Why are we not hearing anything from Holland? And I tell you what, I found a story last night uh, which I think is uh, common sense now starting to rain. And I'm so pleased about this. It seems that an experiment to test whether vaccinations abroad can be considered coronavirus proof was approved by the Dutch government on Wednesday. And it will take place in Rhodes in April. Uh, this is according to uh, reports in the Dutch media. Now, This is a a really interesting experiment, what they're going to be running. The trip is set to begin on April the 12th, and it's it's an intent, it's it's initiative led by their travel industry in Holland, and it uh, will be basically enjoyed by 188 travellers. So basically what they've done is they found 188 volunteers uh, to come forward, and they're going to stay for eight days in an all-inclusive resort on roads, all right, which they say they will be unable to leave and they will only be allowed entry uh, into that complex by the staff. And they will be tested both prior and after the trip to see the efficiency of measures in containing the virus for international travellers. So, This is something I am so looking forward to seeing how this is going to work, because what it should do, it will then obviously put to rights, one, the fact that our holidays are risk for people picking up the virus and bringing it back into their home territories again, or is it just a storm in a teacup? If they've come without the virus, they've been tested negative, they've gone in somewhere, that's basically a sterile environment, um, and uh, basically see if they contract anything uh, before they go. Now, the other thing is, is they're closing the hotel so that nobody else is allowed entry other than the staff working there. Um, it would have been interesting to see if the people themselves would have been allowed out to wander around uh, to enjoy the sights of roads etc do a trip somewhere and have a proper holiday and then test the results to see if they 
contracted anything or passed anything on to anybody uh, while they were there. But I suppose it's a start. It's a step in the right direction. That's one way to actually look at that as well. Now, interestingly, Chancellor Merkel yesterday, uh, she has cancelled the five-day lockdown that they had planned over the Catholic Easter uh, uh, after a crisis meeting was held. And she said that it would be a mistake to lock Germany down over the Easter period. So some common sense from Angelina Merkel coming through there. And um, again, we will keep a tab on Germany to see if they experience a massive rise of infection, because remember, they are also a country that has seen a big rise in infection, etc. And uh, obviously they were gonna continue with the hard lockdown, the same as what we're in. But as again, as we've already seen, this hard lockdown, it doesn't seem to be working at the moment at all. Anyway, uh, some more news again on the US pharmaceutical giant Pfizer is starting clinical trials on a new COVID-19 vaccine, uh, which will be taken orally. So basically, you're going to pop a pill instead of having an injection. Uh, the drug uh, designated is uh, called the PF07321332. I can see somebody trying to phone that as a phone number now. And is aimed at being prescribed to patients who show the first symptoms of COVID-19 prior to any need for hospitalization. Um, also as well, uh, the foreign leaders who arrived in Greece on the occasion of the bicentennial of the Greek War of Independence uh, were welcomed at the opening of the newly remodeled National Gallery of Greece on Wednesday, which to be honest is something I would really like to go and visit once all this madness is over. Uh, they welcomed the guests to the, uh, from the Cultural Ministry, Lina Mendori, said the National Gallery is the treasure holder of the 19th and 20th century art and it's inseparably linked uh, to the evolution of Greek society and the expectations of the Greek state since 1830. So there you go. Um, that's somewhere to visit once all this madness is over. Also, interestingly, yesterday there was a very interesting article about Aegean Airlines uh, took part in the celebrations uh, by flying an aircraft from uh, Athens airport uh, circling around and as they were circling around they were actually writing 200 in the sky not in a smoke trail uh, but basically in the direction that the aircraft takes in navigation. So if you go on to uh, GreekReporter.com, you can actually see the 200 traced out in the skies uh, in the way that the radar track would trace it. And uh, that was quite a bit of impressive bit of flying, actually. And anyway, all the people who seemed to go on that flight had a jolly time uh, being flown around. And it took them about four hours, in actual fact, to fly about uh, to create that uh, 200 trail in the sky anyway um, coming back to Zakynthos now a very interesting story at the moment concerning the cinema here it seems the mayor of Zakynthos has come into conflict with the operators of the local cinema here in Zakynthos, which is run by the local media organization called Stigma, which has been operating the only cinema on the island now for a number of years. Now, the issue is that the cinema, the cinema's cafe and concessions area in the foyer uh, has become a bit of a conflict of interest uh, with other businesses around. Now, the issue dates back uh, to the time of the mayor of Mr. Anglios. Uh, this is going way back. And the pivotal uh, strange role that the, they call it the, the Notorious Cinema Club of Zakynthos. And I remember them years ago. They used to run like art films and stuff like that. Uh, and they were a kind of a very passionate organization uh, in regards to film. But they weren't what I would call a commercially savvy, uh, savvy organization in the running of the cinema. So basically what happened was that they basically had run the cinema into the ground and uh, basically had got the cinema into a kind of a, a, a hole, a financial hole. So anyway, when the new mayor that was sworn in, Mr. Bazikis, arrived, he decided to take charge of the cinema and obviously put it out to tender 
but he also uh, dropped certain restrictions that were placed upon the cinema in the way of doing kind of secondary business in uh, like running um, cafes and etc etc and he actually signed away those uh, rights uh, basically for the municipality to obviously glean money from it and um, dropped uh, certain operating procedures uh, so that stigma could actually uh, take on the running of the cinema now in fairness to stigma they were the only people who came forward to actually um, take over control of the cinema and um, nobody else was interested or nobody had the money to plow into it which is probably more of the important thing because again this was at the time when the economic crisis was was at its height anyway um it seems that uh, over time uh, because of the contract that they got given by the municipality at that time uh, stigma kind of expanded things uh, out into the foyer they were also given the right to put tables and chairs outside so they could obviously uh, you know, people could have a have a drink and have a, a, a chalk ice or something before they go in to watch the movie or waiting for the other lot to come out. As we've done many a time, gone to the cinema, had a little bit of a drink and a coffee, waiting for the, the first showing of the film to end so that we can go in and watch the film that we want to see. Well, at the moment, the mayor is sort of looking at the contract that they were given. Uh, he thinks that this contract is taking money away from the municipality and uh, as the um, as the actual cinema said that the rights that they were given under Mr. Bazikis uh, left some things a little bit up in the air as to the legalities of it. But anyway, the mayor now is looking into this. He doesn't seem to be very happy. His response is that I have to make money for the municipality. I have to look at all avenues of where revenue is being lost and where revenue is being gained. And at the moment, what you've got to remember, and I can understand this from the side of the cinema, is that the cinema is still being closed. The cinema has been closed ever since the lockdown virtually began. And the danger is that we could lose the cinema. And the last thing we want to do is to lose the cinema. We need the cinema. And as the cinema does, it not only is it showing films, but it is showing live broadcasts from the opera over in um, New York, which is fantastic to go to an opera night. And again, it's brought opera back to the island of Zakynthos. They've also been showing plays from the Royal Shakespeare Company as well, doing live streams and showing them there. So not only are we seeing new movies, we're also seeing more art and more culture. And I think um, the, the, the issue over the um, chairs and tables and the concessions in the foyer is a little bit nitpicky, all right, to be quite honest. Um, it is something that we need it is something that we should keep and it's something that we should not lose now there is a Facebook page uh, where you can go and lend your support to, to the cinema uh, I'm just trying to remember what it's called at the moment I'm just looking uh, through my notes here but there is a Facebook page for the uh, cinema in Zakynthos um, uh, it's, uh, it's, um, 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 it's Foskalos um, is the name of the cinema and I'm just trying to find it. Yeah, it's the Foskalos uh, Film Support Group. So if you go onto YouTube to the Foskalos Film Support Group, uh, put some comments down, whether they're in English or whether they're in Greek, they don't care, all right? But as long as they know that they've got thousands of people here on the island that are supporting them, because I would hate to see we lose the cinema because of a technicality as opposed to uh, it is a profitable business, it's making money, and at the same time, it's bringing culture to the island. And we are supposedly, as Zakynthos' history, we are a historically cultural island, believe it or not. We're not just an island full of farming peasants, but an island of poets and musicians, all right? So again, and filmmakers, because we've had quite a few famous filmmakers come from Zakynthos. I did an interview with a Swedish filmmaker, uh, he's Greek-Swedish now, uh, who, who made doc documentaries against the Junta, had his uh, passport taken off him, so then he was stateless and ended up in Sweden. I just can't think of the name of the guy. But again, it's something we need to keep hold of and something we mustn't lose uh, through this pandemic crisis. Right, OK. Um, have I got an and finally story? Have I got an and finally story? No, <laughs> I haven't. 
But anyway, let's have a quick look at who's tuning in at the moment. I again do apologise for my late broadcast this morning, uh, but I did have to have a little look at the parade. Can I say that the parade, all in all, it was quite strange that there were not many people on the streets and the host of the programme that I was talking to was saying that the only time people are allowed out in Athens at the moment is to go do their shopping. So, uh, and again, uh, part of the parade, the... Uh, Athens police were there, uh, probably with their new body cams. Uh, they took part in the parade, and I think every police car in Athens must have been driving on that parade as well. And somebody says, yes, I noticed that as well, whether they're talking about the empty streets and also the police were on parade, the firemen were on parade, obviously all the armed forces were on parade, the EVOS guard were on parade as well, and Prince Charles and Camilla, can I just say, they looked an absolute credit for uh, the UK, uh, laying the wreath at the uh, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, uh, along with the Russian, uh, even though the Russians, uh, their visit is a little bit controversial, uh, because even yesterday, uh, America was telling uh, Greece, uh, sorry, telling Turkey uh, not to keep buying Russian weapons and Russian uh, 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 air defence equipment. Uh, so that kind of put a little bit of an edge on things, I would think, as well. Uh, but the Russians were the allies of the Greeks during 1821. Uh, and I had to laugh. The Russians had a bigger wreath than everybody else. And uh, the guy made sure that it was laid correctly. And the uh, f the Greek, uh, sorry, the Russian prime minister was up there rearranging it, making sure it stood in the right location where the Evos guard had put it down. Uh, but when the French girl came out, uh, yes, well, um, look at the pictures, see what you think. Would you dress like that if you were going to such a formal event? I, I don't think so. She just looked like she was popping out to the shops for a, a croissant and a and a little bit of French stick, I think, as well. And uh, and the and the wreath uh, wasn't so much a wreath; it was more a potted plant you'd pick up in Sainsbury's uh, while off to see Grandma. Anyway, so so there you go. Anyway, Andy Johnson is tuning in. Angela Love is tuning in. Uh, Ian uh, Daly is also tuning in. Nice to see you, Ian. Uh, Sue Saint says, "Gally Mera from Hucknell in Northampton and Nottingham. Nice and sunny today. Is it nice and sunny where you are? Because at the moment it's lovely." Here here at the moment as well. Steve Thompson is watching, Kevin Bell is watching, uh, Rob Davies watching, Patsy Ann Dobson is watching from sunny Margate. Hello Margate. I hope it's uh, having a good day there. Uh, good morning, uh, or good morning, uh, from uh, Halberg, from Maria Halberg over there in Sweden. Nice to have you. She's having coffee at the moment because she's putting lots of coffee signals up there. Um, Matt Williams is also watching as well. Annalise Willis is watching. Martin Nuttall, Brian Darlington is tuning in as well. Shane Bauer, my old buddy up there on the moors of Exmoor. How is it up there today? Well, he says, Ginge, uh, wishing you a happy Greek Independence Day and all its citizens. Happy birthday day and happy independence day thank you very much shane and i hope the buzzards and the horses are happy on exmoor this morning anyway um amanda says sounds like a good way of controlling any outbreaks well yeah that is it they'll probably say well it wasn't the parade that brought the virus here it was prince charles and camilla and the french and the Russians, uh, we, don't, we don't really know how the Russians have been doing in this pandemic because all that sort of thing is kept a bit quiet. But anyway, um, Delia Gusa is watching. Christina Plant is watching. Christine Wilridge is watching. Tim Crystal from Oxford is watching as well. Uh, John William is watching as well. John William Cox. Uh, Catherine Ling, she says, Gallimera, Colin, Gallimera to you, my darling. Uh, also, Nikos from uh, Obelix Restaurant is looking in as well, uh, wishing you a happy Independence Day. He said, I'd rather be open having people come eating and drinking in my in my restaurant on Independence Day than sitting at home and watching it on the telly. I agree 100% with you there, sir. Brian Darlington says, hi, Jin. Shane Bowen says, uh, it's uh, sunny over Exmoor. Bless you. Right, well, that's it from me for today. Uh, can I just say, happy Independence to you. Uh, but Jane actually did make a very special point. Uh, in the fact that he's had his parade where people have had their Christmases cancelled, people have had their carnivals cancelled, and for some people, they were probably their last Christmas and their last carnival. We're going to see what's going to happen. And we had Easter basically cancelled last year as well, and we're going to see what's going to happen for our Easter this year. Are we going to be back to normal? Don't forget, Easter this year for us is a little bit later. It's in May. So... Um, Technically, uh, we should be open. We should be up and running. We should have been up and running this week. 
getting ready uh, for the start of the season with our what we call the pre-season where the flights are coming in so you get that little chance to whip back to the UK uh, do a few little admin things go maybe see relations before the start of the season when you're working like me seven days a week uh, for what would be six months uh, with no time off just basically nose the grindstone get on get it done uh, so that then when winter comes you've got the money in the bank and you're able to survive uh, the next winter well we're going to wait and see if uh, if that will happen and at the moment uh, it's ominous and again it's ominous now because really it's not Greece that's putting the barriers up it's the UK that's putting the barriers up and uh Hat off to the um, to the Dutch uh, for their a very very novel plan to run a test holiday uh, with people and see how that figures out uh, because again it's just been proved the lockdowns haven't really worked it's about living with it you can't fight it in the true sense of the word you live with it and you adapt to it and that's all you can do at the moment but we shall wait and see anyway. That's me. I'll get off my soapbox. Once again, just to remind you, my show from yesterday is up online if you want to tune in and listen to it. Can I just say a big thank you to the lovely Ian Thompson over there in the UK at the Heartlands uh, Hospital in Birmingham. Uh, thank you, fellow. It was lovely talking to you yesterday. I'm wishing you all the best. You've got a lot of great support around you. Uh, thank you to Doctor and the Medics and Martin Kemp from Spandau Belly uh, for dropping messages of support towards you. And um, um, people just looking out for you in general, mate, because you have just been through the most horrendous experience I think anybody could ever live through. Um, and you're very lucky that you're still smiling at the moment and uh, you're just cracking on and getting on with it and, uh, and uh, people are looking after you. And don't forget... 3rd of April, there's going to be a live uh, broadcast by many DJs from the UK uh, to raise some money for his GoFundMe page. And you can watch a live feed of that from the Coventry Telegraph. That's probably the easiest way to watch it. And if you want to donate a few shekels to his GoFundMe, by all means, go ahead. And once again, uh, there's people in Argassi who are rooting for you, fella, uh, that know you from the past. And uh, I hope... You know, again, speedy, speedy recovery. Right, that's it from me. Uh, I'm going to go in now. <laughs> Got some housework to do, bits and bobs to do. Uh, enjoy your day. The weather is glorious. Don't forget to book out, all right? Don't get caught without a mask. Don't get caught more than two people in a car, all right? Because you don't want a 300 euro fine at this time. And I'm not sure what the attitude of the police is going to be today with uh, people just a little bit knacked that uh, we should be in celebrating uh, the 200 years not locked down in our houses anyway that's it from me i will speak to you again tomorrow i'll keep me ear to the ground and have a lovely day and happy independence day ta -ra.